Well, welcome back to CDN Freight Brokers channel. Uh, it's been a long time. I think it, I haven't looked back, but maybe a couple months since my last post. And I figured I was just coming back, heading back to the home office from a customer visit. So I figured I'd take a few moments, uh, pulled over and just sitting in the back of my vehicle and thought I'd just make a little update on some things and touch base. So first thing, customer visits. Uh, as you know, I'm a freight broker agent, so I don't own my own freight brokerage. I'm an agent under under, under a brokerage, um, so I have to. My core of my business is building my customers and having customers. Without customers, I, and that means I've got no loads. It means I don't make money. So without customers, uh, basically, it's my I don't have a business. So it's real important that when you first start out as a broker agent, you're just going to be you know hungry to build relationships and build connections. And doing that through computer and phones is a great way because you can reach anyone in the jurisdiction which you're allowed to operate. For me, I can operate within Canada, within the United States, and cross-border. So, uh, you know, it's great to do that to build those initial. But once you've established some relationships, maybe you've had the opportunity to bid some of their freight and even move some loads. And if you do that, then once you move some freight and you think, hey, this is a really good customer, and you believe you can get some value out of it, it might be worthwhile for you to drive to the customer if it's, you know, depends how far out of it's on, you know, a few hundred kilometers, a few hundred miles, or is it worth taking a flight? And if it's a customer that maybe you've been working on and they got a lot of freight, maybe it's uh, in, you're in that bidding stage and you think that they could pay off, you have to make that judgment. Is it worth flying over to a customer, uh, paying for hotels, car rentals, or Uber rides to get around? Like I know with our freight broker office, if I have a really good customer that I need to either, maybe I'm at risk of losing or uh, an opportunity to secure a lot of business, uh, I have to head it up, but I can reach out to my head office and get support, whether that's the president um, of the company, vice president of sales or someone else that would come along, join me at the meetings. I might get one person, I might get two. So, um, it, so today I went to visit a long-term customer that I haven't seen in a while. Um, so I figured I'd take the chance, went there, but I brought value. I didn't just go say hello. I did bring coffee and donuts, uh, you know, to say thank you. But I also, we discussed their dangerous goods stuff, some of the forms, some of the packaging we went through. So I brought some value to bring some updated current information. So we're making some changes and I'm assisting them. So when you can really take your customers from just the person they call the book a truck to being that freight consultant where they're going to call you and ask you for advice, that's where it really sets you apart. And that's what really gets you deep into the company so that you're a trusted partner. You're not just a person for a truck, but you're a trusted partner. They call on you for advice on the on your industry and, and what's happening. So, uh, you know, when you're starting out, you may just do basic van freight, but eventually you may decide to, you know, focus on flatbed or uh, reefer freight. And like myself, I do a lot of dangerous goods and I do a lot of cross-border. And that comes with a lot of complications and you really need to take the time to study it. Yes, as far as customs goes, there's not a lot as a broker you actually have to do. There's, it's really the shippers and, and, and uh, the customers responsible to fill out the customs paperwork. But because you're arranging the truck, if that paperwork doesn't cross the border in a proper ma manner, the carrier you hired is gonna hold you accountable. And if you have any way that you can be that layer of protection, and I, that's what I do. The, when I'm picking up a load and this needs its cross-border uh, PAPS, which is uh, going from Canada to the United States, so that's southbound freight. If it's PARS, pre-arrival review system, that's northbound from the United States into Canada. I'm always checking the customs. I know what to look for. I can tell by looking at the customs if a broker and the CBSA agents are going to accept it. So my job, it always my philosophy has been make the whole transaction process as easy as possible for the customer, the shipper, the consignee, and most importantly, the carrier. When you can do, when you're always, you're thinking, well, the carrier might take my customer or, or so forth. When you can do the job way better than the carrier could, and they realize that, yep, I can't do what Rob is doing. Um, that's what the key is. You, they, they would rather work with you because you make it so easy for them to keep their trucks moving. So when you get that mindset that, hey, I want to keep moving, um, sorry, I want to keep moving with Rob. The, the point is, is that you want to look for uh, making uh, how you can make the whole process. So if you have dangerous goods with your customers, you need yourself to be certified in dangerous goods shipping. 
You also need to understand what the documents specific to your customer. Understand package mar the, the safety indicators or package marketing for the packaging, when placards are required, uh, any special provisions for transportation on ground or ocean, if you're doing any ocean freight, and the difference between TDG, Transportation, transportation of Dangerous Goods in Canada, versus CFR 49, the US DOT requirements. It's your job is to figure out there's, there's nuances for every product that there might be this requirement in the United States and this requirement in Canada and, and so forth. So you need to kind of you know, research and study and find people to help you so that you can turn around and make that whole transaction as easy as possible. So when you've got you know, dangerous goods, temperature sensitive, cross border, like that's red carpet shipping there, uh, that there's a lot of, lot of things in play compared to, you know, so the whole idea is that back to customer visits is initially when you're a broker agent, you're going to be just building connections. There's multiple ways that we've talked about it and I'll go into other videos about it. But once you've either found a customer that they're reciprocal to you, they're talking to you, but they haven't given you the freight, but you know, they got the freight and you feel that, you know what, I've talked to them like 10 times. I know they got the freight. Maybe if I met them in person, they would just give me that chance. Then that's when you make that judgment call. But typically what I found has been, if you can secure the freight just to get a chance to get one load and you move one load and you show them you did a great job and they give you two. Once you get two, three, four loads, then you want to go and meet the customer and I'll show you what's in the bag. So let's see if I can adjust this a little bit here, but I've got a little bag here that I carried with me today and let's take a look at what's in the bag. So what was in the bag when I went to see my customer? A safety vest. I carried the tape measure on my belt so that I can measure their products. And I had my safety hat, okay? I even have available when necessary, because I've been to some warehouses when required, is I have ear protection. And if I really needed bigger ones, I've got the big ones. And if I really needed, I also got safety gloves. So that's what's in the bag there, okay? And the other thing, being a broker agent, if you're a broker, whether for yourself or someone else, you have the flexibility to work anywhere. So what's in the bag? Here's my portable bag. So let's see how this works out. I'm just gonna lower this down just a little bit. And I'm gonna show you, sitting in the back of my car, so I've got a portable headset, okay? So I can work. I've got a couple different, I have two versions I use, but this is one from Sennheiser. It's the DW uh, MB Pro One. Um, yeah, it's the Sennheiser MB Pro One. What do I've got? I've got my laptop. So as simple as I can open this up. Got a calculator available. My cell phone cord cable. This mouse, this is fantastic. It's the Logitech MX Master 3S. You can have it programmed to match with three separate computers. It's got this nice dial on the side, super smooth. The dial here is super smooth. Battery life plugs in. It's like months upon months of, uh, you can connect it with a dongle and or Bluetooth. I carry, when I bought my laptop, I bought two chargers. I keep one at my home office and I keep this one in my briefcase at all times. So I've got a charger. Ready, ready to go. And I also got my notebook, okay? So I'm gonna fire up my laptop and the second piece I have that's most important so that I'm fully portable. This is a Lenovo, what do they call it? It's the Lenovo LCD monitor Think Vision M14. So it's got, it's a portable monitor. So it's just got a nice little kickstand so you can have it at different angles. And essentially I just go like this It's got a Thunderbolt cable. Plug that in there. Plug that in there. So there we go. I'll just move this. There it is. So if you can see, I've got two monitors 
with software on it. So I can be sitting in the back of my car, in the front seat, I can move over to this Starbucks restaurant that's here and work. So I'm fully portable, plug in my mouse, and the, like I said, the mouse is excellent for being Bluetooth and a dongle, so I keep that in my briefcase, and I have a separate mouse I keep in my desk. So when I get home to my home office, I just literally pull out my laptop, plug it into my, I have a, a dock charger, and uh, uh, basically plug it in, and I'll give you guys a home tour office. I think I may have done it one time before, I can't remember, but I'll do a home office tour and show you how, how I have that set up to be portable. But I have a, two monitors, uh, a dock station. I just plug that USB into my laptop and then the two monitors pop on. I got my phone system. I just have to convert it, transfer the calls. So right now I got my VoIP phone system forwarded to my cell phone to keep it simple. And then when I get back to the office, I just basically click one button and it turns it into my VoIP and I got my VoIP and phone. So really simple keeps me portable keeps me nimble i was i went to my customers beforehand last night i worked late to get myself caught up and then this morning uh, i was doing i had to send a couple emails before i left went to my customers and on just before i left the customers it took about five minutes I had to respond to a couple emails made this stop for this video then i'm going to go back and i got a pile of work to do so sometimes too when you're a broker agent and you have a if you don't have a book of business well if you're going to fly to a city um, and visit a customer then if you're if you have the time you might as well since you're going to you, you set up that customer visit you might as well cold call some customers saying hey i'm going to be in the area would i be able to stop by and introduce myself and that's a great way to start saying i'm really coming to see some other customers would i would you give me five minutes to stop by and say hello drop a card off um, so you can do that so you can make a whole day of sales but remember every time you go visit a customer you need to execute so well, i'm going to make some videos about that i'm going to really try to um, bring some context around being a freight broker agent within a freight brokerage. Uh, I can give some tips on the bro brokering side, but let me know in comments what you would prefer to see. But I think the be biggest bang for the buck I can bring is being a freight broker agent and the carry relationship side of things and the customer relationship, but as an agent. Um, and then I can bring in the whole complex, you know, if there's questions around being a brokerage, but because I've never owned one to say I've, I've worked in, in, in two of them, but I know quite, I know everything all about it, but I've never, I can't say, if, you know, it's not me signing the paperwork to say that that's a big difference. So I wanted to bring that context there. And then other than that, why I haven't been posting is I've been busy training. I have a freight auditor that works for me 20 hours a week and I've been busy training there. I've been super busy with my loads uh, this past week, Friday, last week, and Monday, yesterday, August the 21st were both rough days. Uh, yesterday, particularly uh, Friday night, I worked till nine o'clock dealing with customs and those issues continued on and i'll uh, get into uh, one day i have an idea I have, a, I have a colleague that's a customs person i think i might try to do an interview to help bring some context around customs to see if that can help anyone and share some insight around that to explain pars and paps uh, and some of the processes required and what to watch for uh, but i've been dealing with a dangerous goods issue i have a shipment held in in a city in, in canada uh, that was missing some information that's created some challenges and there was a, you know, a claim with it. Uh, and also, like I said, I've got four shipments right now that are all on customs hold for various reasons beyond my control, but I'm trying to mitigate them and, and help out to, to keep them going. But there's additional charges that happen with that. So it's a, it's a lot of moving parts. It's complex, but um, I just wanted to kind of give an update to remind the importance of customer visits, um, building your, your business, your your book of business basically um, and uh, studying getting getting yourself so that you're that freight consultant for the business that you're the customers that you have you know your your book of business but you're not just a, a freight person but you're a consultant to them and when you get to that where they rely on you and they trust on you that's that's a deep relationship it takes time and consistency and that's the last piece of this thing is saying that um, when you're building this business it's polite persistence wears down resistance and what does that mean? Well, if you've done your research on that client, that customer, that build, that warehouse, that manufacturer, the distributor, uh, whatever area they fit in in the world of logistics, if you've done the research and you know they have freight and they have good credit, well, you know, and, but they're not giving you a chance to quote the freight, but you believe that you can service this customer. Because remember, not all shippers are equal. Like if someone, if you're new to this world and someone gave you 20 loads to start booking tomorrow, could you do that? And you know what, That's, it may sound like, oh yeah, I could book 20 loads. Well, hang on a sec, it's not as simple as that. So depends how much knowledge, like if you're coming into this business 
with sales and, and customer service experience, but not a lot of trucking experience, your road is, a, your, your learning curve is gonna be that much higher. But if you're coming in where you may have been a driver or where you were a dispatcher, well, you understand trucking a little bit, but you may not understand the sales side. So, you know, you got different, different levels in which you come into this. At the end of the day, how it's all about you learning what you need to learn to service the book of business you're building. And sometimes you're gonna find customers that you know that they have the freight, they would be a great customer, and they're not giving you the chance yet. So that's where polite persistence wears down resistance. You politely keep bugging them without being annoying. You try to, every call, bring some value, something that may think, hmm, maybe I should talk to this person more. That's what you wanna leave them with, that that person really seemed, you know, they seemed interested in my business. They just didn't want to make a sale, but they actually seemed interested. How do you portray that? How do you convey that when you have literally 20, 30 seconds to talk to them on the phone or one or two lines on an email? How do you convey that? There's a thousand ways to do it and we can talk about that, but the point is, is that's, that's the end game is you need to convey a message so that your customer is thinking, hey, I want that. I want to talk more to that person. So um, hopefully this has been somewhat helpful. It's kind of you know gone around, but basically I talked about the customer visits. My What I've been doing is I've been busy with, um, like I said, training. I've been super busy with customers' loads. I'm quite backlogged and because um, I'm dealing, like I, again, that's one of the biggest things I bring to my customers. I'm not just that, I'm a freight auditor behind the scenes. Every load I have, like I have a project on the go right now that's kind of complex and there's a lot of um, reference numbers involved and, and tracking and I got I have to make sure that what's been happening is the shipper sometimes loading things in different sequences than what we think and so the paperwork's been getting messed up so it's been taking time to make sure that so that in six months from now if my customer comes to me I'm ironclad right now it's a bit disastrous but I'm fixing it up so that it's ironclad and that if they came to me and said Rob what did we ship on this day uh, we had three trucks loading that day. What did we ship? I know exactly what was done. I've got the backup to support everything. It's taking some time, but that's important to do. And that's what's going to allow you so that when the next project comes right away, if you did a great job with a project like that, when the customer has another one, they're going to say, we, we're not even going to shop around. We're just going to come to Rob or just come to you for that, for that project. So that next book of 10, 20 loads because you did such a great job tracking everything, not just moving the freight, but also the, the finer details. So take that into consideration, leave some comments, uh, what you may wanna see, but hopefully that helps you out. If you have any questions, let me know.